Hi everyone, Leo here from Sauce Labs, where we help you test at the speed of awesome. Today, I'm going to show you how to configure Jenkins for use with Sauce Labs. Jenkins is a popular open source continuous integration server. As a side note, these setup steps will work for most teams, but if your team finds that you are in a unique situation, feel free to reach out to our support team. First, let's discuss Jenkins installation. If you haven't already installed Jenkins, it's pretty easy. Just navigate to www.jenkins.io and follow the steps to download the Jenkins WAR file. Once you've downloaded the file, run it, and you'll be able to navigate to it on either your local machine or on the server where you downloaded it. By default, Jenkins will be visible to anyone who has access to the server it's installed on, so make sure to discuss this with your infrastructure staff regarding any security they might want to implement around your server. We now need to install the Sauce On Demand plugin onto our brand new Jenkins server. To do this, click Manage Jenkins, and then Manage Plugins. Once you've opened the plugins page, click on the Available tab, and scroll down until you find the Sauce On Demand plugin. A faster way to do this is to search the page for the word Sauce using the Jenkins search at the top right of the screen. Check the box next to the plugin. You may also need to install some other plugins, such as source control management or some build steps you plan to take. So take some time to review all the plugins available and select those as well. Once you're done selecting plugins, click the Download Now and Install After Restart button at the bottom of the screen. To restart your server, check the restart box at the bottom of this new page. This will take around 10 seconds to restart the server after all your plugins are completed installing. Now, let's create our first Sauce Labs on demand job. First, click New Item, enter in a job name, select Freestyle Project, and click OK. Once we're here, we're going to select our source control management system. At Sauce Labs, we use Git, so we'll select that. Then, enter in the appropriate value to download your repository. I'll enter in one of our sample frameworks that uses Java and JUnit with Selenium for this example. As we scroll down further under Build Environment, a new checkbox will appear for Sauce Lab support. Select that checkbox, and a new section appears for configuring the Sauce On Demand plugin. In this section, we have multiple configuration options. If we want the plugin to enable Sauce Connect, it will create a tunnel into the network on which the job is being run. That means that if this job is run on a build agent, that agent and any network assets it has access to will be visible to Sauce Labs. Next, we're going to select our credentials from the dropdown. These credentials are made up of your Sauce Labs username and access key, which can be found in the Sauce Labs dashboard under the My Account section. To add your own credentials, click the Add button visible to the right of the credentials dropdown and select Jenkins. Next, we can select the OS browser combinations for our tests. By clicking on the WebDriver or Appium input boxes, a dropdown will appear from which you can select multiple combinations. This list is very long because at Sauce we have over 700 different combinations you can select from, so you may have to do quite a bit of scrolling. To avoid this, we do have auto-completion here, so you can type your OS or browser to auto-complete. These values are then provided as job environment variables for your test to consume. Also, if you have a native app path that you'd like to include, you could pass this to the native app package path field. This value will also be available as an environment variable for you to access during the job. And if you're only looking to test the latest version of the browser, check the Use Latest Version of Selected Browser checkbox. This will override all prior browser settings for version and use the latest browser release version. Now that you've set up the Sauce On Demand plugin, make sure your project is printing out a Sauce test ID for each test you run, and then enable the Sauce Labs Test Publisher as a post build step. Let's run some actual tests. The tests we are running are simple that they verify the function of a checkbox, which does or does not appear on the screen. Once you launch the build, you can then track the actual individual tests in your Sauce Labs dashboard if you so choose. Otherwise, you can also check the results after the build is complete. Once it is complete, you can then see links to all your tests and screencasts, as well as logs, which are available directly inside of your job via the Sauce Labs Publisher plugin. And that wraps us up on how to configure, set up, and use the Sauce On Demand plugin for Jenkins. For more pro tips, you can visit www.saucelabs.com. Thank you everyone for attending and watching the video. 
We look forward to answering any more questions you may have in the next Sauce Labs video or webinar.